Hi, it's Jim with Scraptastic Yarns, and I promised you a video showing you how to make the tic-tac-toe game that I made, and um, I started the video, and I had to go away for a few minutes, and I forgot, and just never got back to it, then yesterday I planned on video, but I had to go to State College to pick up some fabric. So that video didn't get made because as soon as I picked up the fabric in scraps and skeins, there was a big, huge clap of thunder, and it began to have a downpour. And I do mean a downpour. I was soaked. But I still had other things to do while I was there in State College. Um, as you know, I was making those lovely uh, fidget toys. And so I wanted to go see if I could find some larger marbles. Because guess what? Walmart doesn't sell marbles. So, and uh, I thought, well, if I don't find marbles, maybe I can find some the glass gems. And um, they had two packages of the really large gems that are about one and a quarter inches which will really work well in those little tubes and those things so I got both of them but uh, yeah and I had ordered some large marbles just in case from Amazon so I get home it's soaking wet and they're delivered and the box is soaking wet and I had ordered quite a few other things because of the craft fair I needed a couple of things and I needed um, some more bags for shipping so it all came together in this box the box was soaking wet I picked the box up of course it disintegrated and the box had marbles in it and the marbles, the packages of marbles were open, so several marbles got loose. So I was chasing marbles in the rain. It was a lot of fun, what can I say? Now, I am going to show you today how to make this. So, let me get everything set up and we'll get ready and get it started. All right, we are ready to go, and here is what you are going to need. You're going to need at least three colors of yarn, and um, these just yarns from the Dollar Tree are just perfect. They work out fine. You might want a fourth color for some contrast. I don't know which one I'm going to use for contrast. I do know I'm going to start with this one. But... The other thing you're going to need is, get these guys out of the way, you are going to need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, about eight stitch markers, you're going to need a crochet hook, and today we are going to use a G hook. Okay? Now, you don't have to use G hook. You don't have to use an H hook. You can use whatever size you want. But I am going to tell you what I did with this. Um, I did go ahead and I used two hooks on this one. And I made another one. This, the one I showed you was made with an eye hook. And an eye hook is fine. It works just great. But I want to make it a little bit smaller so that it can go in for the uh, Operation Christmas shoebox, whatever that thing is called. The other thing you might want is some fray check, and I will show you why, or some fabric glue. Fray check works fine. And then you will also need maybe. A pointer. This is a needle that came from my Centro. Um, I do have some long doll, doll needles, and you can use a shish kebab skewer, 
pencil you could use just needle and thread but when we get to that point I'll explain it a little further okay you're not gonna need your stitch markers just yet and I like to work from the center so and what you're basically going to do is you do need to make a slip knot and this is the way I make a slip knot I twist bring through and then tighten up and there's my slip knot you are going to chain 37 with whatever hook size you are using and you can use worsted weight, you can use bulky, you can use chunky. You can use whatever yarn you want according to how big you want this to be. Chain 37. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, I work in the back pumps. You don't have to, but that's how I choose to do this. And I turn my work and into my second bump from the hook. I do a half double crochet and you are going to do that all the way down to the very last stitch and you can double check you should have 36 stitches do you have to go with 36 stitches no but I chose 36 because it is divided. You can divide it by three to get three sections. That was the method to my madness. I don't know if I told you. I'm going to go ahead and crochet and we can just do a little chit chat. I don't know if I told you, but um, not last week, but the week before. We had gotten a notice from our landlord that they were coming to check our basement to check the seals and for leaks. I said to my husband, we have a basement? You mean, we've had a basement and all this time we weren't using it? It could have been my craft room. We don't have a basement. But you know, I teased husband, I've been teasing the husband, sent him back a note, asked them if they were going to bring a backhoe to dig that basement while they were checking for the seals and the leaks. We never heard anything back. Now this coming Wednesday, they are coming to supposedly change the air conditioner filters, uh, clean out the vents, you know, like the bathroom vents, and check for leaks, and then they are also going to check the serial numbers on all the appliances, which they did that a couple of years ago. Nothing has changed. We don't use their air conditioner, so they can do whatever, but we've lived here 16 years, and this is the first time ever could, they've ever come to do that. Now we jokingly say that's because now they have, she has taken on HUD um, people and there's nothing wrong with the HUD program, it's a great program. I took advantage of it when my children were little and my first husband left and you know, I was on my own with the four children. I took advantage of HUD for housing and it is an absolutely wonderful program. But with HUD, you have to do certain things, maintenance, on a regular basis now. Now that is something that Ben Carson was able to manage to get through. In the past, they just had some very 
limited things they had to check, but now they have more items they have to check. Now, when you're ready to do your next row, you're just going to, you can either chain one or not, but you're just going to do a half double crochet in the first one and in each stitch cross, and you will continue to do that until you have a piece that when you fold it down catty corner is square. Can I tell you exactly how many rows it is? I do know that on the larger piece it was 38 rows. I don't know what it was in the smaller piece, but let's double check. Yeah, I worked ahead. So you guys turn off the video and uh, then you can get that get get your uh, square finished and catch up or you can write down the directions I am going to have the directions up on my website tomorrow hopefully <sighs> barring any other complications but basically what you want to do is you want to turn it on point let's get this up here a little higher hope you can see that to where when you fold it you basically have a fairly decent triangle. Now, for this, I believe I did 10, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26 rows. And then when you finish, when you finish that out, what I like to do is, and you can do this because Let's pull this other one out. With this one, what I basically did was I did a row of single crochet all the way around, and then I did double crochets all the way around, and then in the corners I did a double crochet, uh, chain one double crochet in each corner, so that I could use this pretty much as a drawstring to pull it up with everything on the inside like that and you can do that if you want but I did change things up because while I well I will tell you I did start filming one day and uh, lost the film footage but uh, <laughs> what I did with this other one is I just made some ties on the corners and yes, there are strings, and we'll get to that later, and I'll show you why. So that everything could just be tied up in the nice little neat package this way. So, choose which way you want to do that. Uh, but that is what I did with that one. So, if you, regardless of what you are going to do, when you get when you start on your corners... Bring you back down a little bit. When you start on your corners, you just want to put three in there, and I'm going to put a, double, a single crochet, chain one. And normally you put three in there, but like with the chain one, that takes the place of the third one, or you could put three single crochets in. And then across. I think you get the picture. And all the way around the edges. This one just had a single crochet. That one I like a little bit better. It's a little quicker. Now, I am going to show you what I did here. And this is where you'll need your stitch markers. You're going to count in 12 stitches from your end and place a marker. 12 stitches in, place a marker. You're going to do the same on the top and the bottom and then you will basically figure out what your thirds are and place markers at those third marks. Now we're going to do a little bit of contrast here. I am going to go ahead and leave that attached. Now 
when you do your contrast thread, you want to do, the hardest thing is when you are running it up these stitches here, because, you know, with crochet, you're going to get a stitch here, you get it here, 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 here. That's what, that's nature of crochet. They don't really sit on top of each other like knitting. You could knit this as well if, if you wanted to, and then you'd have an easier time doing your surface crochet. But this is where I used this as a guide. And I just went up and down. So I had a guide and since I've pulled those big holes out, I can still see those nice big holes. And this is where you're going to use some contrast thread. Or surface crochet. Now surface crochet sounds fancy, but we're not really technically doing surface crochet. Surface crochet is a little bit of a different different animal. Um, although I've seen a lot of people call this surface crochet. Surface crochet is normally you're, you're crocheting in the very surface. That's not what we're going to do. For your contrast, go ahead and leave a little bit of a tail and you'll see why at the end. Make your slip knot, then take your hook out you're going to place it where you're going to start your crochet and you're going to pull that loop up from the back. Now, what you're going to do is you're just going to single crochet picking up that thread from the back in as straight a line as possible. And trust me, even when you think it's going to be nice and straight, it probably won't. Of course, that's going to be difficult, isn't it? And you can make this fairly loose, and that's what I've done here. So I've made it fairly loose. If you think, if you think that you're not going on target, you can pull your stitches out and move them. And this is probably the most difficult part of this project. And it's a little easier when you're not sitting on a table trying to do it. And you can just hold it in your lap. But you're just going to crochet your way up in as straight a line as possible to your next stitch. Okay? Now when you get to these side ones, they're a little easier because you've got rows and you can just stay in the rows. And you're just going to do that. You're going to do two this way. And then you're going to do two this way. And that is it. And yeah, I'll finish this later, but this is down and dirty quick and easy. Okay, guys? Now we're going to get to where I use the my contrast and what I used for my To help tie all these ends in. Do you see all these ends? And on the back, you're going to have these ends here. Now, generally what I do is I will pull this and do another knot. And then you're going to take your fray check or your fabric glue. Just place a dot there. You're going to let it dry 
and then you can snip it very close and it shouldn't unravel come undone on you now I would tell you on this one I wove it in this way and then back this way so I'm just gonna place a little there same thing here and this really does act like a glue so I'll go through and I'll do that on all of mine around let it dry and then you can clip it off now when it came to the corners what I did is I took a nice long chain and chain took a nice big loop went into the corner attached it and then crocheted about 26 stitches on the shorter end and 31 on the long end and yes I did go ahead and on these first few stitches I crocheted my tail in there so you know I'm gonna dab it and then when I got to the end finished off tied it in a knot and yes I will dab this one as well let it dry but um, on catty corners you'll want to do a catty corner you'll chain 21, 24, 26 whatever you think you need same thing on the opposite end and then you'll do longer ties on the other opposite ends of that square so that you are able to tie it up or you could do the opposite which was do a double crochet around so you can make a long chain and uh, crochet that in now with this one you'll see I made lovely little rounds and did the surface what I call the surface crochet you'll do one in O's and then you'll do the X on another and it, they're real simple you've already seen how to do the surface crochet sort of but for your rounds it's fairly easy let me get some thread out here for your rounds I use a magic ring you don't have to that's my preferred method just did a magic ring bring my hook up chain two and then I put ten double crochets into the ring I lost guys okay one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten you will join with a slip stitch now the chain two that I did does not count as a stitch you'll chain two again and you'll put two double crochets in each stitch around and join with a slip stitch and then finish off and then you will do your surface crochet the same way I went ahead and made all five of each color and then I'll show you how I finished that up because I actually 
add a second piece to the back and then just crochet it together but when I did my second piece I actually used one size larger hook so that when I crocheted them together they worked out well and the way that I did that is of course I joined it started crochet did a single crochet and then two in the next single then two in the next joining all the way around and um, let me get to that point and I'll show you that after you've done your second round you're going to do chain one and then you'll place the back sides together go into that same stitch do a single crochet and you're just going to crochet these around together this is my back piece this is my front and you're going to repeat that all the way around crochet one crochet two in the next single crochet one two single crochets in the next single crochet two single crochets in the next one single crochet two single crochets in the next one two I don't know why I keep repeating this probably because that's supposedly the way that all good tutor tutorialist tutors do I don't think you need me to tell you that all the way around do you I could if you wanted me to get some more thread here yarn and then this last stitch here is your false stitch and I just skip it bring that through finish it off and you can put a little fabric tack on it if you want then I just bring my tail into the center and there you have a finished game piece I hope that this taught you how to do this um, these are gonna make some great gifts for kids any time of year um, they're soft so you don't have to worry about injuries um, you if you have a chewer you might have to worry about a chewer but uh, they're great you can use them for the operation shoe boxes the reason I made this originally is because of rose with wings November is the month for boys toys and baskets so have fun making a ton of these for um, the boys make them for the crisp operation you know uh, shoe box for Christmas um, these are going to be great gifts regardless and um, yeah it's real simple it's quick it takes maybe an hour to do the whole thing and I hope this video helped you to figure out how to do it I know I did a lot of down dirty quick and easies but um, I don't think you want me to sit there and crochet the whole block or each round all that kind of stuff you know you just need the gist of how to do it like I said you can use any size hook any size yarn the only thing that I do um, is I do use two different hook sizes when I get to this last round because it just lays a little flatter this one I did not do it and you see how it kind of curls up a little bit but they're still going to be great gifts um, yeah 
All right, everybody. See you guys again soon. And always remember, kindness is a gift that you can give to someone else that's totally free. So let's all practice a little more kindness. See you guys again soon. Bye.